What I'm going to talk about is voices from the youth. And as I said to you before, I was talking about the fact that you can get DVDs of people, literal voices of people's memories, and you can get a CD of it. But I want to just for you to have a look at this kind of tiny pamphlet, which I hope you can called Reflections on Place. And it's written by a lady called Eleanor Rawlings. And it's written in a journal called Teaching Geography, for, which is produced for sixth form students and first year undergraduates. And she's talking about place. And as John was talking about place and going through the specs, it, it, place itself can be made up of a number of different things. And this particular article, I'll leave you with to read later, but I just wanted to pick out a couple of things about it before I talk a little bit about the voices. What she is doing, Eleanor Rawlings, is saying that a man called Tim Creswell, who's written lots and lots of plays, talks about it in a number of ways, in three different ways. Describing it, a description, an in-depth discussion of, say, the Oosburn, in terms of how it developed, all the different industries that there are there. There is a social constructionist approach, huge long words, um, which basically means that place is looked at through different ways of people talking about it, social construction. And what she is saying is that you can look at it in terms of the social or the economic or the political processes. And when John was talking about specs, that's what he was talking about, wasn't it? Different political policies, economic ways that it used but itself developed. And then there is this phenomenological, <laughs> terrible word to say, approaches, which is very much about feelings for place. And she said, and I really agree with her, that if you're studying place, the good thing to do, or an important thing to do, is to realize that you can describe it but you also need to look at the processes. And then in addition to that, and again John was talking about it in his specs, you need to know about this idea of place as being an essential part of being human. Feelings for place, place and identity, what it's like to be a Geordie or a Matthew, that kind of thing. And what she is saying is that to study people, you need to do a number of different approaches and look at them together. I say that, but then what I'm going to do today is just very briefly, as I say, it's only going to be quite short, is I'm going to look at this idea of a phenomenal approach to place. Talking about the feelings to place. In your booklet, of the actual article. Here is Eleanor Rawlings talking about looking at places being discrete areas, looking at the importance of social influences, economic, political, and different types of geographers have talked about places in different ways. And this phenomenological one is talking very much about an idea of humanistic geography, which started off in the 1970s, is still going today, and it's talking very much about feelings for place. So I will leave you to read that. And as with John, one of your handouts has got some of the other things I'm going to talk about briefly, but didn't just jot things down on the lines by the side of it. So that's a particular way of looking at place, three major ways and binding them together. And let's look very much at the Oosburn, because what I'm doing in this very brief account is to tell you different ways in which you can use resources 
produced by the Lisbon, something on YouTube I'm going to show you, and something that I've done some work on, to build up a picture of place, this idea of being in the world, everyone having a different sense of place. And by the end of your A-level course, you'll have heard sense of place a lot of times. As I said, you can look at the Usburn Trust, and there are a number of different things. First of all, there's this DVD, which I would recommend to you. It's got all sorts of things in it. It's got a history of the Victoria Tunnel. I, mean, I don't know how many of you have actually been down the Victoria Tunnel. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I would really recommend, if you can get up there in the summer, it's a really very interesting thing. And I know what I'm talking about in terms of the Usburn Trust resources is focusing on this tunnel. But think of it as a way of looking at place. It doesn't just have to be a tunnel. It can be different ways of looking at place. So, in this particular DVD, it talks about how it was built, the history of it. You've got some recycling over the the top of the tunnel, and what's very interesting is the wartime memories of people who are, talk who are talking and being interviewed. And what I would say to you, if you are thinking about doing something about how people feel towards place, feelings are kind of very complex, and they can cover a number of different things. So what I did was to look through both the CD that I'm going to tell you about and this DVD and take notes about what people were saying. So it's not just how you feel yourself, but the sights that they saw, the searchlights and the barrage balloons. They're very, very vivid, these um, experiences that people have had. And something that I, coming from the south, did not know much, much about in terms of the war experiences here. It's not just sights, it's also senses as well. Some people found it was really nice and warm and cosy you go there during an air raid, but other people found it was very cold. It was a very, very difficult time anyway, and they explained what it was like to grow up in the First World War, if you were a child, which they were. You know, no one took care of you. You really had to kind of fit in because everybody was worried about everybody else. And, as I say, it's a very interesting talk about that. You, know, you can also buy a CD from the Trust as well, and that has different memories, really interesting memories. Again, looking at the Victoria Tunnel during the war. But as I say, you don't have to think, oh, I just want to focus on one particular physical place like the tunnel. But it can be different ways of getting people to, or thinking about how people talk about place. And what I would suggest you do would be to listen to this CD and the DVD, see how they talked about place, and then go down yourself to the Usman, how would your experiences of place, of going into the tunnel, perhaps, or going on this tunnel tour, feel? How do we look at place from the past and also to the present? So I looked at it again. I looked very much at what people had said about different places. And really, there are all sorts of themes from their interviews that you could use yourself. The idea that if you are going to do an in-depth interview with people in the Usman, with people that are perhaps in the shops or in pubs, or people who are on the street, and you're getting them to talk about what, it's, what place is like, what the Usman means to them, as distinct to what it meant to these people, um, are there different reactions to place in different age groups? What do children think about it? It's a very vivid picture of what children in the war feel about it, but what do people today feel about it? And again, all the senses are being used. Feelings of peace and cold, and seeing that I've, this was really interesting and very, very vivid. 
you could see the flames, you could smell the sweetness of the sugar that was burning. And then the shrapnel <coughs> was pinging off the roofs, pinging off the streets, it meant you ran faster. <coughs> so a very vivid idea of what it was like in the Eastern during the Second World War. But it might seem to you all, oh, you can't just think about history, the Second World War is a long time ago, but have a look on YouTube and have a look at this video entitled Voice from the Eastern and it's made in 2011. Very interesting view, a particular group of people's view of the Eastern. Um, very particular, because what really struck me is I listened to it. People were saying this is a community of interest in the Usburn, not a community of place. People that were talking on that YouTube video didn't live down there, but they loved it. They worked down there. And they gave all sorts of different insights into people in the Usburn. The stables, which help disadvantaged young people, on Sydney Bank, the person who worked there was talking very much about what it was like in terms of helping and working with disadvantaged young people, giving them a different view of the place, as well as a different view of working forces. And there was all sorts of scenes of Usman in the summer, of Usman festival, and of people trying to describe what it was like, that, what, what the Usman festival was like, what it was about Usman that drew people here and created feelings. But when you watch these videos, when you listen to these series, think about it, try and think about it in a crystal way. How do they choose the people that were on that video? Do those people represent everybody that's done in the US or no? They are talking about the US in a very positive way, but are there other people who are down there who don't think about it in such a positive way, particularly the heights of the festivals when it's very, very crowded? So, again, there are resources that give you an idea of what people have thought about it in terms of place, how they've engaged people with place, which are useful, I would say, as a way of getting you started. Think about the things. And think about what you would ask if you were making a YouTube video or, or filming your impressions of the place that you use them. Who would you ask? And what are your observations of it? Because you could do in-depth interviews, you could almost write a blog about it, or walk through the views, but, and how you feel about it yourself. All, this, I, all these different ideas tying into this feeling about the place. And I wanted finally to show you something that I've done with my undergraduates, my first years, so people have just started university. And I was always <laughs> talking to them about place. And place can be a huge, kind of baggy concept, really. There's so many different ways of looking at it. There's so many different ways of analyzing it. And I wanted them, at the end of their first year, they went to a place in Scotland called Pitlockery. And I wanted them to talk about place, place in Pitlockery. And I use this work from this man here called Ian Gilbert, who has talked about how you look at a place. So I've given you the web link to it, but it's quite a simplistic way of doing it. And he's earned thousands of pounds from this, which, which makes me quite envious sometimes, because this is quite simple. What Ian Gilbert said, that if you want to study a place, you need to look at eight different areas. As you can see, the things like feelings, sounds, sights, which are very much your senses, 
Then he broadens out to people and words and actions. And that could be a way of just having something in the back of your mind to think about place. What I would say to my students was, if you're going to go and interview people, because they are basically they were talking to people in Pitlockery about what those people in Pitlockery, not just the residents, but also visitors, what they thought, what they felt from Pitlockery. So I said to them, you can feel a bit um, strange going up to people in the street saying, what do you think about the Unisburg? But use this kind of eight-way thinking to, to introduce a way of talking to people about place. So they would say to people in Pitlockery, for example, can you give me three words to describe what you think of Pitlockery? What sort of sounds remind you of Pitlockery and so on? So I think there are all sorts of different ways that can help you do something about a sense of place, a feeling for place. You can look at how people thought about place in the past and compare it to what they think now. You can choose people to interview, or you can write detailed observations on place and compare it to observations from those CDs, or the CD of the DVDs. You can look at YouTube videos. I, one I, I looked at was, was very appropriate in terms of sense of place and what people thought of it. But there are all sorts of different videos on the Usman and on different places, as, as you know best than I do. Or you could think of actually looking up this eight-way thinking and using that as a way of, sort of, as a kind of start of looking.